So Messier 82 is, uh, is a galaxy, so it's not, a, it's not a star cluster or a globular cluster, an open cluster, it's a galaxy. It's a galaxy part of the Messier 81 group of galaxies. So it's a distance of around just over 10 million light years. And what's interesting about Messier 82 is that it's, it's undergoing a rate of star formation, in other words, stars are forming in that galaxy, at a higher than average rate, which means there's a lot of stars being formed in that galaxy. It's using up its fuel supply of cold molecular gas at a, at, a, at a rate which it can't sustain in the long term. And if it kept, tipped, kept on going at its current rate, it would run out of gas uh, from which it forms stars in the next, probably the next few hundred million years. And so it's what's called a starburst galaxy. It's a galaxy which is forming stars at a high rate. Uh, and because stars of different masses have different uh, lifetimes, so the Sun will, uh, has a main sequence lifetime of about 10 billion years, whereas high mass stars have lifetimes of maybe only 10 million years. That means that the high mass stars which are forming right now, or have formed in recently in, in, in M82, the, the big stars die very quickly and very explosively as supernovae, cold collapse supernovae. And so the large numbers of stars that have formed uh, means that we have, we expect supernovae to be going off in that galaxy at a very high rate. Uh, and that means that basically there's a lot of energy. Each supernova explosion, a bit like the Crab Nebula, injects a lot of hot gas into, into the medium, going at very high speeds. And that can kind of puff up the galaxy. That kind of, it kind of puffs up the kind of inner regions of the galaxy. In the, in the center of M82, there's what we call a, a series of clusters, each of which are going to be undergoing supernova explosions maybe every few decades. It's that kind of, that kind of rate at which supernovae are going off. And that kind of is puffing up the kind of gas within the galaxy, which means what happens actually is that as one supernova goes off, it kind of adds more energy. Another supernova goes off, adds more energy. Now, in the disk of the galaxy, there's lots of, um, instead of medium, maybe gas, which is kind of constraining it in the disk. So if this is, if this is a disk of M82, in, in, the, in, the, in the disk, there's kind of material which is, con which is confining it. Whereas in the, in, the gal in the other direction, out of a disk of M82, the density falls off of that gas, which means that this, this puffed up gas, hot gas, is basically, basically able to kind of form a, form a chimney or a funnel, or what we call a super wind, away from the disk of the galaxy. So when we take a look at M82, which is, happens to be viewed side on, we're seeing the disk of the galaxy like this. When we take a look in um, an indicator of really hot gas, which is maybe like in X-rays or in some other diagnostic, what we find is actually the gas is basically funneled out in both directions, above and below the plane of the galaxy. And so, so M82 gives us the best ever view of a galactic superwind or a galactic chimney, which is where the, where the hot gas formed in supernovae is being pushed out of the galaxy's disk into the halo. And it's the same with the Milky Way. The Milky Way, the hot gas in our Milky Way, is, which is formed in supernovae explosions, turns out to be living up in the halo, out, out of the disk. So it's a little bit like what we think is happening in the Milky Way, but it's a very clear view because in M82, we happen to be seeing it side on. So it's got a lot hotter. It's also a much smaller galaxy than the Milky Way. It's a small galaxy with a lot more energy being kind of uh, concentrated in the center of the core of the galaxy. It means that it's a much more efficient process because in the Milky Way, uh, all the massive stars are mostly in the outer spiral arms of the disk, whereas in, the, in, a, in uh, M82, it's all in the nucleus, and so it's very confined, all this hot gas. So it's a little bit like, I mean, it's a little bit like, the analogy is like, a bit like, a, if you think of a, a bag of microwave popcorn, yeah, as you heat up the bag in the microwave, and you can hear the, hear the, hear the kernels of popcorn popping, that could be like a supernova. And as, that, as they pop, 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 what happens to the bag? It basically it bloats up, doesn't it? It heat, fills up with hot air. And it's a little bit like that in, a, in, a, in the center of M82. The popping supernovae, are basically bloating up the, the bag of hot air. And of course, then if you open the bag, all that, all that hot air goes out of the bag. So you have to be really careful when you're opening a bag of macro popcorn that you don't scald yourself. Because once you open the bag, it can escape. And the same way, looking out of the plane of M82 is also where you have that hot gas escaping away from the kind of denser regions in the disk of the galaxy. There have been plenty of supernovae, core collapse supernovae, that we've seen in M82 in the last few decades. Now, the, the reason that in the, in the center of M82, there's 
Uh, there's lots of stars being formed. There's lots of gas. Where you find lots of gas, you find lots of dust. And so, in fact, actually, in the same way that, that the M82 supernova 2014J was, was very nearby, it wasn't quite as bright as it would have been had it happened in another galaxy, a galaxy which didn't have as much dust, because dust absorbs light in the optical. And so what, what happened is that the, 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 the supernova that we've found in M82, if they, if they went off in the centre of the galaxy, we might only see them in the radio, because the optical and infrared light is, is absorbed, we don't see it so easily. If there's one thing I've learnt astronomers like, it's supernova. Does that mean uh, this particular object gets more attention from astronomers than other ones? Like, is, are people keeping a closer eye on it, or is that not necessary? Well, I guess people looking for supernovae, people keep an eye on all the nearby galaxies. Uh, now, that one, that one, the supernova that was discovered in January, was discovered in North London by a, by a former colleague of mine, Steve Fossey, and his students who were, who were eating, eating pizza at the time. Uh, and they found it because actually it's, it's so near that a lot of these kind of clever automated algorithms that looked for supernovae in nearby galaxies were saturated. It was so bright that basically it didn't get picked out because it was such a, such a bright thing. And so in fact a lot of nearby supernovae get found still by amateurs because they go, well that wasn't there last week. Um, but it's, it's, I would say all nearby galaxies are now being monitored regularly for kind of a new, a new star, a new supernova stars are being formed and these, for these stars are producing massive winds, they're exploding, that are producing more winds that are pushing material out of this galaxy. So this week we've actually seen a star explode in this galaxy.